But people are still indulging. Cinnabon and Auntie Anne's and Carvel have seen some of the highest year-over-year -year comp sales that those brands have seen in a decade. So people are still treating themselves. But Anything in moderation, in, right? Yeah, totally. Smaller portions, flavor variety, something that gives them a little bit of a treat and affordable indulgence drives permission to indulge. Why the higher comps, though? There's got to be something else happening, not just people suddenly finding sure. sweet tooths. Absolutely. Well, and if you, th you think about where Cinnabon and Auntie Anne's are located, it's primarily in malls. So the higher comps are even more interesting because it's not as if traffic is escalating greatly in those venues. One, I think a big part of it is the multi-channel presence of those brands. The fact that the brands are being built outside of just that core in grocery and other retail. And so the awareness is eclipsing what the typical core franchise business could create on its own. But what did you specifically, did you, they're in airports when I'm walking through Absolutely. between gates and I smell, and I smell it. And yes, that's what do. does it with the Cinnabon. Yeah, the aroma. Absolutely. Did you somehow, I mean, how did you leverage what you already had to, to take this, you know, to much greater, greater height? The first step was to just make sure we were honest about what we are and what consumers loved about us. And it, in fact, with Cinnabon was that we were an uh, irresistible indulgence. Right. And so the, the, the rule there is don't try to be something you're not. We had programs to launch low-fat or sugar-free cinnamon rolls. We tried them. No one bought them. <laughs> Everyone right. said they wanted them. People really wanted what we were good at, which was irresistible indulgence. Auntie Anne's, wholesome hand-rolled pretzels. So how do we extend that into other channels? We realized that people loved something highly differentiated, but in order to stay relevant, we needed to launch smaller portions, more variety, and get creative about where we showed up, such as Burger King and Taco Bell and other restaurants. Now, you know, it's, it's difficult in that business to stay on the edge of things. I mean, you've seen Krispy yeah. Kreme, you've seen a lot of products come and go. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to keep it fresh and new and contemporary? <laughs> One is stay insanely close to the customer yeah. through social media, uh, with our franchisees, our leadership team worldwide actually working in the businesses. And the customer and the employees, by the way, usually have all the answers. They know what people are asking for, and we ask questions such as, what ends up in the garbage? You know, what are we selling that actually isn't being fully consumed? And what can we learn from that? Social media and our ability to be very accessible on social media has allowed us to be receptive to our fans' requests, and that has driven the innovation cycle of the business. What about what you just said, that you ask your employees, what ends up in the garbage? How can we do something better? Give us an example yeah. of something you learned and how you changed it based on that. Uh, when our team was first forming four and a half years ago to turn the franchise business around and then support the, the global multi-channel growth, we did nothing but spend the first few months working in the bakeries. And we just asked employees three questions. One. Uh, what are we doing that fans love? What, are, what did we used to do that we don't do anymore? And tell us about something that happens in the business where you have to say no. Hmm. You don't want to have to say no. If people are approaching your business, they have money, they're physically present, and they want something, and you have to say no. If you can fix just that problem first, you can really build a business. And for us, on the Cinnabon side, we had a, a problem with our beverages. We used to sell them, the blended beverages, the chiladas, people loved them. But through the recession, we had taken cost-cutting measures. And that ended up cutting out some of the flavor and the indulgence and the quality. And we instantly put the high-quality dairy base back in, ended up elevating the flavor profile, and sales took off 6% just from making that small change, all because the employees told us that was the answer. The, the, the customers were telling them, this doesn't taste the way it used Absolutely. to. You cheaped out. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> now you've, you've done a wonderful job at Cinnabon. You've been, you've been promoted to a broader platform. Mm -hmm. Are you going to take some of the things you did at Cinnabon to that platform, or how do you think how do you think differently about your new job? I think very differently about the new job. First, we have six brands: Mo, Schlotzky's, McAllister's, Carvel, Auntie Anne's, and Cinnabon, and Good. they are all at <laughs> <laughs> they are all at very different points in their life cycle. They're all franchise brands, and so we have one common goal: to build the brands on behalf of our franchisees, so the businesses stay healthy. But the way we do that will not always be the same as Cinnabon. Cinnabon is highly differentiated. There really is no number two. Auntie Anne's is a pretzel, number one pretzel player, but there are others out there. So there's more head-to-head -head competition. Carvel, tons of ice cream. So it's not as easy to differentiate with those brands in grocery and retail. The one thing we do have with all of those brands that's similar to Cinnabon is world-famous, highly differentiated brands and grocers 
and other restaurants want premium brands to plus up the offerings they already have, and we have built a muscle at Focus Brands to deliver that. There's not necessarily another one that has the Cinnabon scent. I think about all the things you did with Cinnabon, from going into the vodka, from going into <laughs> just the scented things that walk through. You don't necessarily want to... A room deodorant that smells like Schlotzky's, right? No, exactly. <laughs> but Auntie Anne's already has pretzel products, pretzel dogs sold in the freezer section in Target. Yeah. Carvel has ice cream cakes in grocery stores. Moe's has fresh Mexican offerings in BJ's Wholesale. So there are certainly ways to bring these beautiful brands to our fans that might not be vodka or aromatics, but that are really delighting people around the world. Hey YouTube fans, I'm Landon Dowdy from CNBC. Thank you so much for checking out our channel. You can subscribe by clicking right here to check out the latest Mad Money CEO interviews, market news, financial advice, and product unboxing. Enjoy! Mm -hmm.